What's going on, folks? Looks like we are live right now. Uh, first, should probably start off addressing the elephant in the room, which is, Caleb, your office does not look the same, which uh, you're right. That is an astute observation. It doesn't uh, have been hard at work this week, repainting, uh, doing a little bit of, you know, sprucing up the place. I'm halfway through the process and I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far, but it's far from done. So anyway, uh, that's why this place looks like that. I'm sure as people are coming in, they're going to be like, whoa. Um, but anyway, today on our schedule, we've got all of these stacks of SNES games to go through and look up and figure out whether or not they are valuable. We'll be uh, you know, talking through some of them, getting reactions, making predictions of uh, which ones may or may not be valuable. Um, and then hopefully at the end, I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet here on which I will be tracking uh, some values and we'll be able to calculate and see how much this stack ends up being worth. If you guys have predictions, definitely uh, drop those in the chat right now. I see we've got a good number of people uh, here already. Thrift School, Je <coughs> excuse me, Jesse's in the house. Um, Steven, Paul, Samuel, Jordan, Jamie. Awesome, good to see you guys. Or maybe it's Jaime. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start going through these. Uh, looks like we'll be fighting off, <laughs> fighting off, starting off strong with uh, Power Rangers, the fighting edition. That was where I slipped up there. Got, got a $28 price sticker on it, which is why I have high hopes. I'm going to be sorting them on this card table over here, uh, just figuring out which ones are actually worth individually selling on Amazon and which ones are not. Got a bunch of folks jumping in here. So I'm gonna start out scanning this game and we will figure out how we are starting out here. Steven, thank you very much. Appreciate the encouragement, Samuel. All right, someone's guessing 20 bucks on Power Rangers already. This one, okay, this is actually the wrong Power Rangers. That's interesting. It came up on Amazon. Looks like I'm going to have to look this guy up on eBay. What I want to know from you guys in the chat right now is what has been your most exciting video game flip recently, if you've had any? And if you haven't had any, what's been your most exciting flip in general? The... Uh, Power Rangers fighting SNES, except I typed in voting. All right, let's see here. Yeah, looks like that guess of 20 bucks was pretty much right on. Maybe, maybe he had some uh, prior insight into that one. 24, 24, 25, 29. So we'll go ahead and say conservatively 22 bucks on that one. And this will be the very start of the profitable pile, which you guys will be able to actually see as it gets higher. All righty. Uh, next up, we have Super Caesar's Palace. I'm going to guess this one is not worth beans. Because normally the like casino, like gambling kind of games just don't, don't hold value. Nope, not worth it at all. Ooh, this one is one that I do know has value. Super Mario All-Stars, a absolute classic. I want to say this one's going to be worth like maybe 25 after fees on Amazon. Super Mario All-Stars. Uh, okay, looks like I was maybe a little bit high. Well, so the lowest FBA copy is 31 before fees, 21 after fees. So that's what I'm going to go with on this list. As always, folks, definitely let me know as you are hopping into the chat if you have any uh, questions or comments or anything uh, that you'd want me to respond to. I uh, use these lives as kind of a way to actually interact with the community because it's kind of one thing to like respond to YouTube comments. Um, I feel like a DM is kind of the next level up, but like actually in the live chat, responding on video in real time, I think is kind of that next level. So let me know if you guys have uh, yeah, questions, comments, concerns, rebukes, rebuttals. Do I have a Pokemon card collection? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I do actually. Mostly uh, like full arts that I just kind of like. I keep also the biggest thing that I'm collecting Pokemon card wise. By the way, I don't know if I said that. This uh, NFL quarterback club is what I am scanning now. Uh, looks like not valuable at all. It's surprising. Um, the cards that I look most for are actually reverse hollow legendary collection cards. Those things, they just look so amazing, like the firework reverse hollow uh, on those. This one is NHL 95. Not surprising. Also, another sports title that's pretty much worthless. Um, so yeah, if any of you guys have those and would want to trade for, I don't know, games or something like that, give me a decent deal, I might be interested. Unfortunately, it looks like the new paint job in the office is not <laughs> correcting the constant focusing issue with, that we have with this darn camera. Now we have NHL 96. Would guess that this will also be worth almost nothing. Wow, 96 people watching already. Thank you guys for hopping in here. Definitely hit the like button if you haven't. Uh, Pickflip says, I'm posting sales now while listening to this. That's a great way to join the fun. What's my best Pokemon card? I don't know what my best Pokemon card is, honestly. Okay, this one is coming up as a little bit more on Amazon, five bucks after fees, but it's 65,000 rank, which is not really what I like to see. Let's see if we can get this darn camera to focus on me. NHL 96. Yeah, I can't think. I would guess that one of my most valuable cards is probably in that legendary collection. I have like, I think I have a reverse hollow uh, Gengar from that set that uh, goes for a decent amount. Um, SNES. Looks like yeah, I could maybe get like eight or nine bucks for it. So this is in the like barely, barely acceptable uh we'll say like four conservatively on our actual list oh my goodness camera focus figure your life out it'll figure it out eventually hey we got logan in here faithful discord friend Not here to talk about Pokemon cards. I'll talk about Pokemon cards all the time. Uh, here we have NHL, another NHL. These are all alphabetized, which is why I'm going to save that for a little bit later. I don't, I don't think that's actually going to be worth much. Monopoly we have next. Any predictions on that? I don't think, I'm pretty sure this one is super common and not really worth much. Here's what that looks like. I think this is actually what's causing the camera to go out of focus is like trying to focus on these games. And then, like, it doesn't really realize it needs to come back. Needs to come back. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going in the common pile. By the way, if you guys, uh, if anyone out there is looking for a bunch of NES commons, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I may end up selling um, the ones that I don't want to sell individually as a lot to, you know, a viewer or whoever might want them. Um, Okay, so this one is coming up as more valuable. The lowest copy on Amazon, this is NHL 98, by the way, um, is going for $29, but it sells super infrequently. Let's see, NHL 98 SNES on eBay. Uh, okay, lowest copy is 17 bucks plus shipping. So that's kind of a surprise there. Actually, worthwhile game. Uh, we'll go for 18 on that to be conservative. All these watchers and only 11 likes. Oof, that is rough. Okay, no, we have 28 likes. I'll, you know, I don't have to uh, wallow in self-pity. All right, pick flip. It says open a pokey pack up and focus the camera. <laughs> uh, also, let's do a live trade together. So the, ca the camera is a problem. I will admit that I don't know how to actually get it to focus. Normally, it figures itself out after a while. Um, but thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. And I do not have any Pokemon card packs on me right now, at least not loose. I have some in the other room that are boxed up that are, um, I think, tag team sets, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm going to hold this up, and maybe the camera will 
figure itself out. I also think that maybe there's a setting on the computer that would, let's see, Logitech, camera, oh, is it is it doing it? What's up, Anashi? Thank you. All right, I'm going to hide that user for spamming. Sorry about that, folks. And we're gonna get into more of these scans. So right now, okay, we've got Mortal Kombat on this. And anybody ever played this game? I never have. I the only Mortal Kombat game I played, I think, was on the PS2. It was okay, not really my cup of tea. Um, but I would guess this one's worth maybe eight bucks after fees. I think this one's pretty common, um, but you know, it's still one that people like. So uh, I might have been a little bit high on that. Uh, yeah, it's one that I'll still send in, but on the low end, somewhere between four and eleven dollars, we'll probably get for this on Amazon. So, question to everyone: What is your favorite flavor of Mountain Dew? Uh, Major Melon is not mine. I just I kind of had to try it out. My favorite flavor actually was a ah, oh, it's some sort of a berry. I think flavor that is only available at Sam's Club, which is just the worst, but it was so good, dude. How many days do you source a week? Um, maybe on average two, I would say. Uh, getting large buys like this, like the video that I just posted, the last one, um, definitely helps a lot. So this next one, we have Super Off-Road. I'm trying not to hold the games up close to the camera because it'll mess us up. Um, I did put that one into the spreadsheet, so we're good on that. Super Off-Road is an incredibly slow seller, and the picture is wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't think this one's going to be worth, worth a whole ton, folks. Super off-road SNES. Mr. Pickle says, how's it going? Thanks so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. That, uh, that means a lot to me. Uh, and it's going quite well. I've been having a ton of fun this week, like remodeling. It's not really remodeling, but like, you know, rejuvenating the office. Uh, and yeah, that's just, it's a really fulfilling process because it, like, I'm kind of addicted to the feeling of like, of like leveling up something, you know, like improving something permanently and like mixing everything up in this office. Like by the time I'm actually done with it, it's gonna look really nice and professional in here. And that just feels really good. Okay, looks like this is actually like a solid 13, $14 game. So I'll say uh, 12 on the list, just to be safe. Commonwealth Picker is up in here. Uh, says played that one back in the day with my brother, but I played it in the arcade because I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm not sure at this point which one he was talking about. Maybe Mortal Kombat. That's a common arcade one. Uh, but thanks, Kevin, for hopping in here. Uh, then we've also got uh, Super Off-Road The Baja. So maybe this one, I actually, I'm more optimistic about this having scanned that other one. Has anybody played Super Off-Road? I'd be interested to know if it's a decent game. Reminds me almost of like Excite Truck. Uh, looks like probably not. Baja. Uh, $7.99 free shipping. So this one will go in the stack of commons. Walmart exclusive frostbite Mountain Dew. Okay. And Dr. Pepper is my favorite flavor of Mountain Dew. <laughs> Love it. All righty. Ooh, okay. This one's going to be a valuable title right here. We've got, oh crap, don't, don't unfocus camera. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we've got Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario World. So let me come up here and sort of give it some help. That's better. Um, on the SNES. So this one, I'm almost like, it's got to be worth more than uh, Mario All-Stars on its own. That one was like, what, 21 bucks? Oh yeah, this one's looking good. Uh, looks like 32 after fees. I'm going to assume 30, and it's in this nice plastic protector and everything already, so that's really sweet. Code Red is a solid choice as well. Hey, Flipping Accountant is in here. Good to see you, Justin. Um, 
Next, we've got super play action football. Hey, Robin, thank you so much for the super chat. You guys are being so generous today. I really appreciate that. New subscriber here, loving your content. That's so awesome. I It, it always makes me happy when uh, people are like stumbling across the channel. How did you actually find the channel, by the way? I'd be really interested to know that. Uh, if the YouTube algorithm is helping me out or maybe uh, someone else just mentioning the channel. It's, I'm always interested to hear that. So Super Play Action Football is a incredibly unvaluable SNES game. Uh, hey, Ben Schmerler is in here. Also has a solid uh, game hunting YouTube channel if you guys are interested, along with Pick Flip. Um, Coffee and tea. No, that doesn't count as Mountain Dew. All righty. So next up, we've got WWF Royal Rumble on the SNES, of course. Uh, I've been actually pleasantly surprised by some of the other uh, wrestling SNES games. There are a couple valuable ones. It, I think wrestling is kind of an exception to the general trend of sports games losing their value really quickly. It kind of has a, a cult following, and looks like this one's no exception. Um... $24 is the lowest listing on FBA, and uh, it definitely, it's a slow seller, but still, 16 after fees, that's a keeper for sure. All right. Um, also, I should say, I don't know if it was like implied or not, all this stuff is a uh, result of the large purchase that I did it actually was like two or three weeks ago at this point, but the video just came out yesterday. So this is a, a timely little live. I've got the NES, uh, the NES like processing full video coming out. I want to say Tuesday. I think uh, tomorrow's video is a retail arbitrage one. Um, and then a full video on this haul will be coming out, who knows, at one point in the future. Uh, but probably within the next few weeks, I my upload schedule is, you know, pretty much whenever I have the time to edit a video, I'll just schedule it for the next slot until I just have too many, at which point I'll start throwing some in at random points in the week. Uh, but I'm not there yet. Super WrestleMania is what I'm looking at now on, uh, yeah, not really finding it on Amazon. That's why I'm sometimes having to go back over to eBay, which is a little bit of a pain. Super WrestleMania. Super Mario Bros. So uh, this one's like right on the bubble. It looks like it sells for around eight, seven or eight plus shipping. There's one for nine free shipping. So I'm probably going to put this in the commons pile. That'll be a nice one for somebody to get if someone ends up buying those in a lot. Uh, Owen has a super chat for, is that like, uh, I don't even know, is that euros? Either way, that's really cool. Thank you, Owen. I really appreciate it with the cool emoji. Uh, oh, also, Robin says that she came over from a Harry Tornado's channel. That interview is, I guess, the gift that keeps on giving. So Thanks, Josh, wherever you are, uh, for featuring me. Uh, do I have a game collection or do I just resell? I do have a game collection. It is up on a shelf right now because I have not revamped the shelving in this whole space. That's kind of the last thing that I want to do. Um, but at some point, I will have uh, my Switch console and game collection somewhere in this room. Uh all right, Kentucky Yay is here, another local. Um, all right, Jaime again. Uh, shout out to Caleb and the fellow Discord members, except Natamore. <laughs> love it. I love the, the trash talking here. And thanks so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, please do let me know if it's Jaime or Jamie, though, because uh, I guarantee I'll have to, I'll be saying it in the future as well. Uh, Chuck also found me from Harry Tornado. Yep, that. What a guy. I, I can't gain any subscribers on my own, apparently. <laughs> no, I know that's not what you meant. Uh, next up, we've got Mortal Kombat 2. Any guesses on whether or not this will be more or less valuable than the last one? I would guess 
maybe a little bit more. Maybe the print run of this or the uh, production run of this was a little bit lower. 47 likes. Thank you guys so much for helping a brother out on that. Yes, I was right. Mortal Kombat 2 looks like, uh, and this is a much faster seller, which is nice. I think it was 17,000 and it's loading. Uh, every once in a while, I have to actually go back and then press the thing again to get Amazon to realize what the heck it's doing. Um, so it looks like lowest FBA is 33, but the lowest in general is 21. So I'm going to play it really safe and assume I'm only going to make like 15 after fees on this. Um, but definitely more than Mortal Kombat 1, so that's really nice to see. When's your next Will It Trade video? Total fail on my end with that uh, Phoenix Resale tactic. Um, I don't know. I have uh, Switch listed right now, but don't have any like really in the works. Got a couple solid RA videos coming out, a couple of these kinds of videos of processing stuff, so... That's what's uh, coming down the pike for you guys. But if I can make some solid trades, then there will be a video eventually. Just kind of depends on the market. I'm getting some like okay offers. Uh, Tetris 2, not doing it. Not doing it for me, unfortunately. Mortal Kombat 2 is a much better game than 1, Steven says. All right, that's interesting to know. Found you through YouTube's recommendations. Been addicted to all your vids. All right, that uh, that's good form. Says that YouTube actually has been helping me out. So thanks to the uh, algorithm gods for sending those people over. Okay, we've got another one. Mortal Kombat 3. Any predictions? I'm going to say maybe it's going to follow the same trend. I don't know. Uh, is Mortal Kombat 3 a better or worse game than 1 and 2 on this nest? You guys can let me know. Ooh. Wah, wah, wah. Yikes. Looks like the lowest copy on Amazon is going for 1082 before fees. Uh, lowest FBA is at $20, though, so that would net me 12 bucks after fees. Uh, I'm going to take the risk with that, especially because uh, it sells fairly quickly at a 32,000 rank, and it's in really nice shape. So I'll take the risk on that. One thing that I probably should tell you guys is that on cartridges... Technically, according to Amazon's uh, specifications, you're not supposed to say um, if it doesn't have the original box and manual, it, you shouldn't list it as very good condition. Um, what I do personally, which I can't necessarily recommend to everyone because I think it may be technically against the policies, but if a cartridge is in really good condition, I'll list it as very good because I don't think anybody reasonably expects to get a game like this with the original box and manual if it's not stated. And I'll in the description I'll always very clearly say uh, does not include box and manual. Uh, but anyway, there's just a little listing tidbit for you guys. Um, and for that in the spreadsheet, I'm just going to estimate like four bucks because I have no idea really what it's going to go for. Flippity flip with another super chat. Thank you guys so much for that. that uh, that's just really kind. I found you through some guy called Bald Cyclone or Hairless Hurricane or something like that. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to take a little screenshot of that and send it to him. I think I'll get a kick out of that. If you don't mind, flippity flip. That's funny. Uh, next up, we've got Super Conflict. Games like this, like shooter games, I really have no no uh, notion of whether they're going to be valuable. I'd say more often than not, they're not valuable, but it really just depends on rarity and how much people ended up liking them. Um, so that's what this guy looked for. Looked at opening an Amazon selling account last night for some books, then realized it's 39 a month, wondering if it's worth it. Jessica, that's if you have a pro seller account. Uh, I believe you can open up an individual seller account that uh, doesn't charge you at all. However, the math works out that if you do end up sending in uh, more than 40 items in a month, uh, you have to pay a dollar per item if you don't have the pro seller account. So the math works out that if you do that, um, it's just worth it to have the pro seller account. And there are a couple other benefits as well, which may include buy box eligibility, which is a pretty big thing. Um, so anyway, Definitely not a bad thing to get your feet wet with the individual account, if that's what you prefer. 
Um, but yeah, that would be my two cents on that. Super conflict SNES. The reason that sometimes I'm going to eBay after looking it up on Amazon is that the sales rank is just super high, like above 70 or 80,000, uh, which this one was, it was 90,000 rank. Uh, this one is on sale for $13. Let's check the solds. Looks like seven bucks plus shipping, uh, 15 plus shipping. 11 free shipping. This one's just right on the bubble, folks. Um, I'm I'm probably going to put this one in the comments pile, and that'll just be maybe a nice surprise if anybody ends up buying those in bulk. Matt Simpson says, I found you from Chase App at the right price. A lot of people found me through him as well. Word of mouth is big in this business, I'll tell you. Okay, here's one that I do know is valuable. I've sold this before. Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the SNES. I actually found this once in a pawn shop for like a couple bucks, uh, which is pretty uncommon to find retro stuff in the pawns. Uh, but oftentimes when I do, it is underpriced. I would have said last time that this ended up... Did I, did I say that I sold it for around 30 after fees? It's looking like this time... I'm likely to only sell it for around 20 or so after fees. So that's a little unfortunate, but I'll take it. May end up selling for more just because of the condition. It is, it's in really nice shape, a nice plastic protector here. So that's good to see. And Brandon says, bring back the OG acoustic guitar music. Dude, you've been, you've been following along a while if you know that. That's, I'll, I'll give you props for that one. Um, that was back when I used to do a lot more um, like daily vlog style videos, like right at the beginning of quarantine. Uh, I was doing a lot of a lot of like reseller vlogs of like what's sold today, and here's like I'm packing up this order and whatever. Um, which I don't do as much of anymore. I like my videos to kind of focus on a theme now. So like you know this live is we're looking up SNES stuff, and the video that I post about it is going to be. You know, where, like, how much is this box of SNES stuff work, worth? Uh, to me, that's more compelling than just here's what I'm doing today. Uh, I personally am at a point right now where I'd rather put out fewer uh, high quality videos than, like, basically quality over quantity right now is how I'm feeling. Um, that might not always be the case. But especially given that like YouTube doesn't constitute a huge chunk of my income, luckily it does. It is paying some at this point, um, but not large enough to really dedicate the primary chunk of my time to it. I still, you know, reselling is what ultimately pays the bills. So I'm focusing on quality over quantity at this point, uh, even though nobody asked at all. <laughs> just to let you guys know where my head's at on that. Uh, Tetris Attack is going to be the next title that we look up. Uh, that was apparently owned by, whoa, by a Johnson. And, oh, that's cool. It's got the Blockbuster Video sticker on that going around the side. Warning. What does it say? To play is human. To rewind is divine. You don't rewind SNES games, silly blockbuster. No wonder you went out of business. Uh, we do have a super chat from Chuck Ricks. As a part-time reseller, I have a hard time not eating into profits by adding games to my collection versus selling them. Suggestions? Uh, great question, Chuck. Uh, so it's kind of a multi-layered question to me. Uh, by the way, Tetris Attack, oh, actually is worth something. Uh, lowest copy is $19 before fees. So we're going to say 12 bucks on that. I'll take that for Tetris Attack and a nice little boost of nostalgia there with the uh, Blockbuster sticker. But for Chuck, uh, I would ask the question of what's your primary goal? Like if your primary goal is to like build up the business, then yeah, you've got to enter kind of lean startup mode and make collection additions an infrequent splurge rather than kind of the norm. 
like, okay, I just bought this lot of stuff for a hundred bucks. I'm going to keep one of the games and still be able to like double my money on the rest of the stuff because I really like this one or whatever. Um, but if the primary goal of your reselling is to build a collection, like there are a lot of folks out there like that. And I think that's perfectly legitimate. I wouldn't feel bad about like trying to break even or maybe make just a little bit of money on the rest of the stuff. That's kind of more the strategy that retro Rick uh, is employing. He's, he's, building up his $10 game collection. He's got like a few hundred bucks in the fund to play with. Uh, and he's just been like absolutely destroying this completely free collection that he has made just because he puts a lot of time into finding stuff. So uh, yeah, my, my advice on that would just be ask yourself what the primary goal is and then orient your actions around that. I would never like completely cut out collection editions if that's something that makes you happy because having those splurges, having those rewards uh, can be very motivating. It can have a really positive psychological effect on your productivity. So, uh, you know, I would, I would give you, uh, you know, give yourself permission to do those every once in a while, but you do like, if you want the business to grow and to be sustainable, you do have to limit yourself on that. So I don't know if that's helpful, but um, I pre that's a, that's a really thoughtful question. So I appreciate that. Um, Pink Goes to Hollywood is the next title that we have up here. Pink Panther Game. I've never seen this before. I know that uh, I saw Jordan from um, from Collector's Luck pick up a Pink Panther game on PS1 that was very, that's like a $100 game complete. Uh, looks like we are not having the same fortune on this SNES title. Lowest copy on Amazon is 10 bucks before fees. So this would be like a $3 game. Um, it does have a decent sales rank. So I probably actually will send this in because it's in great condition and because I'll be able to sell it through FBA. The lowest FBA listed game is 35. So that's a big difference there. I'll probably be able to sell this for 20 rather than 10, no problem. So I will send that one in. Hey, pick and ship is here. Thanks for hopping in. Uh, also, I have some other folks giving uh, Chuck some advice in the chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, that that's something I love to see. That's just that's what community is. A lot of people talk about like, you know, our YouTube community. And the biggest reason that I do these lives is like I want it to be on some level an actual community. Like I get that you're probably not gonna like connect with someone in the comments and then like be texting them every day. Um, but I don't know. I like the collaborative nature of some of these lives. I think it's fun. Um, Super Black Bass on the SNES is what we're looking up now. Unfortunately, a worthless fishing title. No surprises there. By the way, folks, check out that sweet pegboard in the back. Just put that one up like yesterday or two days ago. Really happy with it. I also have a new office chair coming in the mail today, which I'm really excited about. This gaming chair uh, would not recommend. Had it for about a year. Do not like. Uh, next one, Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure. Um, I would guess this will be worth something. That's just a wild shot in the dark. Um, looks like lowest copy is at 12 bucks or five after fees. Super slow seller though. That's kind of on the fence for me too. Um, are there any, there are no FBA listings. So I will go ahead and send this in again. Probably we'll be able to get 20 bucks for it before fees. Shoot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I only have 12 line items listed. I think I might've forgotten some. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 13, 14. I did forget a couple. Um, I'm just going to put seven and seven. I feel like that's kind of the uh, average or not seven. What was that last one going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Around seven. Um, uh, Lay or Lee says, I give myself 33% uh, off the average eBay price and sell it to myself guilt-free. That's an interesting solution. I really like that. How his collection is worth Oh, uh, David says now his collection is worth almost $10,000, even though he started with $10. Yeah. 
yeah, Rick knows what he's doing. It's amazing. Um, Michael Conroy says, Discord community is awesome. Yeah, that's a, a good chance to plug that, I guess. We've been having a lot of success, especially with retail arbitrage on video games in the Discord community. Um, so, yeah, definitely hop in there if you're looking to take it a step deeper. I think one of the biggest benefits of that is just having access to other people that, like, do what you do, you know, and can give you advice and, like, actually answer questions and stuff like that. Because reselling can be pretty lonely sometimes. So uh, I think people have definitely been finding the Discord beneficial in that way. Next one we have up is uh, the Simpsons Bart's Nightmare. Uh, I did look up another Bart Simpson game, although I think maybe that was actually on the NES the other day. So I don't know what this one's going to be worth. I would guess it will be worth selling individually, though. Uh, Anashi said, Caleb, did you ever get the Christmas gift? You may have to remind me what that was. I... Uh, that was long enough ago. <laughs> I'm not sure. I know a while back I got some uh, poo stuff from you, but I can't recall anything in December. Um, but December was also the time that we had uh, some stuff stolen from our front place. So that may have fallen into that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, The Simpsons Bart's Nightmare. Yeah. Lowest copy is $22 on Amazon, so that'll be around $15 after fees. Likely we'll go for more than that again, but we're being conservative on this list. Ooh, okay, so this is another one that is in a, a nice plastic protector. Bomberman. Super Bomberman, rather. What's the plan for low-value titles? Yes, they will be trade-in fodder unless I'm going to post them on Instagram ahead of time um, and just see if anyone wants to buy them as a lot for... I think the last person bought NES titles for like 250 or three bucks a piece, which I think most of these will price chart for between like three and eleven dollars or so. Um, so three a piece is not a bad deal. So I'll see if anyone wants to do that first, because that's uh, more than I would be able to get if I were to trade them in. But then yes, if nobody bites, they'll be going to Matt's Game Exchange or Matt's. Games and collectibles. This is not coming up on Amazon with the scan feature for some reason. Super Bomberman SNES. Is this Bomberman 2? No. Oh, there it is. Looks like we've got, ooh boy, slow seller, 62,000. Um, but. Lowest copy is $41. Lowest FBA is 60. So that's a solid game. We'll say uh, 32 just to be really safe, but it will likely go for more than that. Awesome. David says, when did you paint your room? Uh, three days ago. Still smells like fresh paint. Pickflip says, office is looking legit. The space that you work in has really has an effect on your mindset. Uh, yeah, couldn't agree more. That was the biggest reason why I did it. Uh, and that will not be the last improvement that you guys see to this office space. So I'm excited where it is headed. One thing that I would actually take some feedback on is I just was asking myself today, I may end up moving that um, pegboard, which is kind of a bummer, but... Uh, I was wondering, what if I moved this shipping station, like basically over here, uh, to this wall, uh, and then had? So I have, I'm, I'm hopefully going to have a new shipping station, not just that like elevated table, but like an actual kind of workbench situation. Um, I'm thinking about putting that like kind of in in this back corner, but going up this way rather than along the back wall. And then having like, right here I have basically my inventory table of stuff that's ready to send into Amazon. Having still an inventory table here, it'd be a little bit shorter. Um, and then another, another table here as well. Um, 
I couldn't previously fit everything along this wall because the table is six feet and I can't shorten it at all. Theoretically, I could, uh, actually I could maybe shorten this chunk just a little bit and still have that be just as long because I would like to uh, still have my photo studio back there. But the biggest thing would, it would, uh, would be that it would free up basically all the space on that wall that the pegboard is to potentially use as like shelving and display uh, for a background for like my YouTube videos. So that's one other reason that I had for painting the walls in here was I thought it would make a much better background for YouTube videos. I'm getting some new lighting and everything in here. Like we're leveling up in a lot of ways. Um, but what do you guys think? Would it, would it be kind of cool to have like a sort of multi-layered shelves back there um, that I could put like switches and games and random nerdy collectibles and stuff on. I kind of like that idea the more I'm thinking about it uh, because a shipping station is not like the best background. I don't think for uh, like the portions of my YouTube videos where I'm just talking to the camera, like, you know, giving thoughts or updates or advice or whatever. Um, so yeah, let me know you guys thoughts on that. Uh, and I have basically completely forgotten about this stack of SNES games right next to me. So thanks for getting me off track, people. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, what's your favorite SNES game, Matt says? Sorry, I'm uh, trying to collect, uh, catch up a little bit here. Uh, I would say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Earthbound is a great option, too, though. I've never played it. Uh, Lucky Collector says, I started reselling a couple of years ago just to fund my game collection with how expensive everything has gotten. Yeah, best thing I've done. Uh, my collection growth is much faster than I expected. Good for you. Hunting with Tripler is in the house. Good to see you, man. Uh, flipping Accountant. Oh, his ears perked up when I said retail arbitrage. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you a message about it later. Um... Bart's Nightmare is a nightmare to play, Ben Schmerler says. That doesn't surprise me at all. I feel like so many games, particularly on the NES, but even some like spilling over into the SNES, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan. It seems like uh, they're just kind of, they're difficult in the wrong way. I've, I think I've said that on stream before. But, uh, yeah, I don't like how picky some of these, like, really retro games can be with stupid things. You know, input specificity and, like, uh, anyway. Um, next one that we have up is Spider-Man X-Men uh, Arcade's Revenge. Is Arcade a villain? I don't know who that is. Um, how is this title not worth anything? It looks so cool. What in the world? At least on Amazon, it doesn't seem to be going for much at all. Is that an anomaly? Let's see. eBay is the ultimate litmus test. Arcade Revenge SNES on eBay says, okay, 13 bucks, $11 free shipping. What in the world? Nine plus shipping. Crazy. I definitely, I definitely would have thought that this is at least like a $20 game. $8 free shipping it sold for? Ugh. All right, well, that's going in the commons pile. Unfortunate. How do you view game hunting on eBay? Is it worth it? Um, to me, it's just not as fun is the thing. Like, you can get deals on eBay and like, especially if you're willing to buy lots and then like resell everything that you don't want, like, you know, you can do it. Like you can build a collection for free that way, I'm sure, but not really my thing. You should do a video on how you split your prices up between profit and taxes. Cause I'm getting into this and there's no good videos on it. Andy, I basically uh, take my profit and take one third of that or like 30% of that. And then I put it into a separate account saved up for taxes. Usually that'll end up being a little bit more than I need, but I don't want to end up owing more at the end of the year. Uh, that's my only advice. I'm far from a CPA. Uh, I'm very ignorant about tax stuff. So take it with a grain of salt. 
Uh, next one that we're looking up here is Michael Andretti's Indie Car Challenge. Definitely never seen or played this game before, and it is worth beans. This is not very interesting to look at, is it? Why don't we turn this over so that you can actually kind of see? Oh, you cannot see that one bit. No, you cannot. Oh, well. <laughs> it's facing forward now. Next up, we have Tiny Toon Adventures. Buster Busts Loose. Let's see what this is worth. Anashi is voting for shelving. I'm kind of leaning that way, honestly. The other thing that I'd like to put up eventually, and I guess, yeah, I could have that on this wall too, is I'd, I'd like to put my uh, glass whiteboard back up. I would miss that. Uh, this one doesn't even have a sales rank on Amazon. I'm guessing it's not going to be worth very much. Buster busts SNES. Uh, complete copy. Someone's trying to get four hundred plus dollars. Uh, okay. <laughs> Three dollars plus shipping. Two dollars plus shipping. No thanks. You can go to someone else's home. Next up, we have uh, skiing and snowboarding winter. Tommy Moe's winter extreme. It's a mouthful. With games like Bart's Nightmare, it's just a very cheap licensed game uh, that were thrown out there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Not a lot of actual effort put into it. Uh, not worth anything as expected. I think it's about time. This is getting a little bit precarious. Let's scoot that over. Let's scoot. Oh, oh, dang. That almost fell. There we go. Scoot that over. A couple of new piles. Here we go. Scooby-Doo. This one is a bit of a dirty boy. Got some wear on the label there. Uh, not the cleanest, but I would guess it is worth something. People really like Scooby-Doo games in general. Nah, not a lot on this one, unfortunately. Could make five bucks, but it's a really slow seller. I don't like titles like that. Um, uh, I'll put this in the trade-in pile just because... It's dirty and stuff, and I don't want to deal with it. Are you planning on any Pokemon moves with the 25th anniversary and the Logan Paul box break? I don't. I didn't know about the Logan Paul box break. Um, the only Pokemon moves that I have done recently is uh, I bought. Uh, sealed booster case of a recent set that was definitely an investment. Um, I'm I'm looking to like sort of dip my toe into the space, but I don't want to get too into it. Like I could definitely see the bubble bursting. Although, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm dabbling right now so that like in the future when I have more money and am like looking to get into alternative investments, that I actually know something about it. It's kind of my strategy right now. So Street Fighter 2 Turbo is what we're looking up right now. Definitely would have guessed that this is worth something. People love Street Fighter. Yeah, it looks like I'll be able to get around 14 for that after fees. Uh, cool. Ben says Buster Busts Loose is pretty fun. He's just like an encyclopedia on <laughs> what it's actually like to play some of this stuff. That's amazing. I like buying and selling, like flipping video games even more than playing them. And also somewhat collecting them, but like the stuff that I'm not really nostalgic for, it's like, eh. Michael Jordan, Chaos in Windy City. What a guy. Look at that cover cover. Look at that label. Yeah, it looks like I'll be able to get something for this. Maybe 10 bucks or so after fees. 
I like it. Slower seller again, but whatever. Next, we've got Stanley Cup on Amazon is going for... Do you play any games games or just resell? I play mostly Switch games. This Earlier this week, I was playing Puyo Puyo Tetris, <laughs> which actually was really fun. Not going to lie. I'm not like a huge puzzle game guy, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, not worth anything, by the way. Next, we've got Out of This World. Cool, like interesting looking label on that one. Twin Lake Resellers says, what's up? What's up yourself? Uh, this one, for some reason, the picture on Amazon is the back of it on the world. SNES. Looking it up on eBay here. Liam says got the videos got him into reselling on eBay. That's awesome to hear. And the flipping accountant recommends uh, investing in Lego bricks rather than the cardboard of Pokemon cards. Yeah, I just don't know as much about it. And also, I don't have the space. Like, Pokemon cards are nice and condensed. You can fit a lot of value into a box. Legos, not so much. And I do not have the luxury of a ton of space right now. So it looks like $6 plus shipping, $7 bucks plus shipping. I don't really like that. Like, I could maybe get 12 shipped, which is fine, but I'll keep it. I'll do it. I'll throw it on eBay. What the heck? All right. This is interesting. Next one is Mickey Mania. The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse. Never even heard of this game. I think it'll be worth something. Looks like it is. Um, yeah, 10 bucks or so after fees. Not bad at all. Next up, we've got uh, Tetris and Dr. Mario. Hopefully worth more than the individual Tetris and Dr. Mario games, but we will see. Uh, David T, how much product do you typically sell on a daily basis? I can let you know in a second here. Uh, yes, looks like this one is going to be worth at least 12 after fees. So that's cool. I'll go back to my uh, homepage here on the app. Looks like so far today, uh, it's been a good day so far. Really, really solid day. Uh, 26 units. And total of five hundred and fifty-one dollars. Uh, looks like uh, a couple days ago was six hundred ninety-seven. Day before that, five eighty. Day before that, five twenty-five. So fairly consistent. Um, this time last year, or maybe a couple years ago. I wonder how much, what percentage I am up from last year. 107% up from last year, this last 30 days. So uh, definitely have been growing a lot and, uh, you know, large deals like this definitely help. A lot of online arbitrage really helps. And granted, that's not profit, right? Like I'm not making 500 bucks a day. That'd be awesome. Um, but I would say like this last year, after all of the expenses and like, stuff that I had to spend to try to grow the business and stuff. My net net profit uh, after taxes and stuff only ended up being like 20 or 25% of my gross, but uh, still really happy with where I've come and uh, going to keep growing. Hopefully next we have pilot wings was only some store at some point was only trying to sell it for six bucks. So I'm not, not super optimistic on that. How did you get ungated selling Nintendo on Amazon? I actually have a video on that subject uh, under my resale guides playlist that you might like, Jennifer. Um, not coming up. 
pilot wings SNES. Why why is Famicom coming up? Nobody plays that. Okay, we're going to the good old eBay. Yeah, it's not looking promising. Five bucks plus shipping, three bucks plus shipping. That's going to be a no for me, ladies and gents. 126 folks watching. Thank you guys all for tuning in. That's really cool. Next one we have is Time Slip. Anyone ever played that? I sure haven't. Kayla, if you want to get depressed, check out how valuable the wax boxes of those 98, 89 hoops are going for. Oh, gosh. Tripler, don't tell me that. Oh, gosh. I just sold, like, three or four months ago. I just sold, like, I don't know, six or eight boxes of those, and I do not want to know. I think I sold them for, like, 35 apiece or something. Uh, yeah, I will not be looking that up, actually. <laughs> Time slip, super slow seller on Amazon. So I'll have to go to eBay. The Mickey game where he bounces on the tornado is pretty fun. Uh, most expensive one so far. What was the most expensive one so far? Probably Mario All Stars and um, and Mario World. That one was going for like thirty or forty after fees. Okay, so time slip is like a fifteen to twenty dollar game. It looks like, so I'll take that. I'll say fifteen. Cool. My throat's getting sore. Philly Pickers in the house. Pup says, have you considered opening up your own brick and mortar shop? Any consideration of that that may have entered my mind vanished after watching Sick Cooper's channel. Those dudes, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably watch them. They upload daily. Oh my gosh, the amount of work that their store demands is absolutely crazy. And they post daily content. I mean, they work, they work like crazy. I can't even believe it. Um but like more power to them, but I have no desire to do that. Um, having a physical store comes with so disproportionately much more overhead that uh, it really, it holds no allure to me. Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2. Uh, kind of a crappy label on this one. I don't, not crappy, but like there's definitely some wear on it, some marking and everything. It's not showing up super well on the camera. Slow seller again, of course. Retro games just sell slow on Amazon, but it looks like I could get 11 after fees. Again, the picture is wrong. Eleven bucks. Hey, David T, helping a brother out, hitting the like button. I appreciate that. Next one we have up is uh, Super Battle Tank, War in the Gulf. Um, Super Battle Tank. Super slow seller and not... Not super valuable, unfortunately. Sorry, Super Battle Tank. Mario's Mario's early years. Fun with letters. Do I need to look it up? No. I'm going to get closer so that hopefully it focuses again. Hello, camera. Super slow seller again. Let's look on eBay. Mario Fun with SNES. Huh. 
I mean, it actually does go for like, we have 15 shipped, 10 plus shipping. Uh, oh, hold up. Uh, 12 letters. Twenty two, seventeen, sixteen. What in the world? This game actually sells. Glad I actually looked it up. That's wild. Physical stores requires you to be there. Yeah, that's that's another great point, Inashi. Uh, a big part of why I love being self employed and like being a reseller is the freedom that comes with it. Um, having a physical store makes things like vacations a lot harder. And it's <clears throat> one thing, like when you're in business with a partner, like, you know, for example, uh, Abby, who like can actually like split that burden with you. Like they don't both always have to be in the store, but like Erica, I can tell you ain't doing that. I would, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want her to. Um, she's got a much higher calling as a lawyer uh, than running a video game store. And e like, even if she did want to, like, I think we'd probably still stay online because like, you just have a lot more freedom that way. Next up, we have Mario Paint. And I know for sure that this one is not valuable. Um, if you have the pad that goes with it, it has a little bit of value, but um, let's get the camera so it realizes who I am again. Where did you get your business sticker roll made uh, in the background hanging up? Canva is where I do like everything. I make my thumbnails there. I did my uh, like thank you cards on Canva and had them print them. Did my business cards through Canva. It's just, it's a great program. Um, Arcade's Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection 1. This one I'm a little bit torn. I feel like it, I kind of feel like it might be worth something just because uh, collections tend to do really well. Um, no, I was wrong. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not really worth much. I'm going to do three more and then probably call it a day because my voice is starting to go right now. Um, and then we will calculate and see how much this whole lot is actually worth. So the three, okay, I am optimistic about these final three. These seem very promising. First one is Super Putty. This looks like a blob punching a monster. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, no, what? You're not worth anything? I don't believe it. Super putty SNES. <laughs> um, looks like not nine dollars free shipping, nine dollars plus shipping. Oh, it's right on the line again. Eight free shipping. Yeah, I'm gonna throw this in with the commons. Uh, then we've got Yoshi's Island. Huh. What does it mean when, like, it's got more pins on the side? You see how this one, like, there's just this regular, like, pin strip? But then on this one, there are two more on the side. What For you retro heads, let me know what that means. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. This one's got to be worth something. It just has to. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm talking about. Looks like, yeah, 35 after fees. Let's go. I'll take that for sure. And I'm actually going to put this one. I thought I had them here somewhere. Oh, there they are. I have a couple of those uh, plastic protectors that I haven't used yet. Eh.
or rather that I took some not really valuable games out of so that I would have them available. Because that's like a solid $35 game after fees, so take that for sure. And then finally, the last one of the day, Ninja Boy on the SNES. I, I have high hopes for this one too. Super Ninja Boy, sorry. Everything on this system is super. All right. Uh, and this one is a super slow seller, but looks like we're looking at 11 bucks after fees. So that is good news. And here, folks, is... That's actually a really good ratio because right here are the games that are worth selling individually. And then the two, the row and a half in the back are the ones that are not actually worth it. So I'm really happy with that ratio. And let me go into Excel real quick here and tell you guys what everything is worth. And the grand total for everything I have calculated here looks like after fees will be about $358. So definitely a solid return. That's uh, really more than I was expecting this stuff to be worth. I was expecting more of it to be kind of worthless commons, but that's, that's really exciting to see. Um, so in this last half hour or so, I'm sorry uh, if... Um, I've missed some of your questions. I've been kind of trying to get through it because my voice is starting to go. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for stopping in so much. Uh, I'm excited to get the rest of this stuff processed and then edit the full video and share that with you guys. I think you're going to like it a lot. Excited to share this uh, room update video with you whenever that actually ends up getting finished and that process gets done. Uh, and yeah, thanks a bunch for hopping in today. As always, I will catch you guys on the flip.